morning once again behind the scenes before we came on air there was a very interesting discussion that uh, I, um, I was having with uh, the official uh, from uh, Buganda Land Board who will be giving us perspective on uh, aspects on land acquisition in the country of course this particular conversation comes on the backdrop of uh, the latest in a series of uh, land grabbing or land controversies in the country i'll just give you a preamble before i introduce him when companies seek to acquire land for business activity they lead to relocation and uh, loss of shelter for some people especially the communities or households near that uh, particular land involuntary resettlement occurs when affected persons do not have the right to refuse land acquisition and are displaced and this may result in long-term hardship the conversation follows the acquisition <coughs> or is it a false acquisition of land at Kazi now Kazi is one of the most iconic uh, places in the country especially for those that have been in the uh, scouting business you very well know that at least 130 120 acres of uh, land that belongs to the Uganda Scouts Association at Kazi, that is in Wakiso district, has apparently uh, been uh, taken over by unscrupulous individuals. The Buganda Land Board is up in arms and has issued a caveat emptor. Let me just look for that caveat emptor, read it to you before I introduce the guest so that we can have exclusive and uh, good perspective. Notice is hereby given to the general public that land at Kazi comprised in Chad on the block 273, a plot 5 measuring 120 acres belongs to the Kabakar of Buganda and it falls in the category of official mile land. Now the caveat emptor here is uh, a little bit long. It won't allow for our broadcasting time for me to go through it. But the final wording is that no other person apart from Buganda Land Board or entity, not even the Uganda Land Commission, has the authority to transact and do business on this piece of land that was given to the Uganda Scouts Association way back by the King Mutesa to, among other things, simply do scouting work. Now, if anybody seeks to subdivide that land and turn it into commercial or residential land, they are going against the agreement for which Buganda Kingdom gave this land to the Scouts Association. It's a bit complicated stuff, not so? But we have with us in the studio the spokesperson for the Buganda Land Board and also renowned lawyer, Dennis Bugaya. Many thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for hosting us. How are you doing? Oh, fine, we are doing fine. I'm glad you're fine mm. in light of what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll first bring us up to speed. Of course, I've had a preamble that I've just delivered to the audience right here. But you have the facts and the circumstances of the latest controversy with you on your fingertips roll us through that oh um well, uh, the land we are uh, talking about is uh 120 acres 120 acres now 120 yeah. acres someone someone might not get a picture mm. what does 120 acres mean in cars i might also struggle <laughs> you find that uh, <laughs> the value for an acre there mm. would go up to two billion per acre two billion so we are talking acre. about 120 acres we are talking about an asset which is worth like 240 billion Uganda shillings. So that has been the scout's wealth, that's the kingdom wealth. So um, in 1948, mm -hmm. um, Sir Edward Mutesa, the then Kabak of Buganda, yeah. so as we call them Sekabakas, uh, this Sekabaka. is the king, um, leased out the land to, to the Boy Scouts mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. for purposes strictly and restrictive for camping. 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 Yeah. And, uh, even the public knows, even the youngest of the scouts, I think they are they called cubs, mm -hmm. they have they are they, they, they have they have they have stages. That's right. Know that Skazi has is always been for camping. their home for camping. Yeah. It's known. So but of recent, uh, some members within the Scouts Association, I call them members because mm -hmm. I don't think it is a resolution of the Scouts Association, the Association. to pass out the land and give it to private individuals. Acting as individuals? 
not mm. as the association. They could have acted in the name of the association, mm. but again, against the rules and against the spirit the of the association. Mm. So that's what we are focusing on. And we are saying that, look, this land was given to you by the kingdom mm. on Elise basis. Yeah. Elise basis which has restrictive covenants mm. that you are given this land purposely to do this. Mm. You can't do any other thing or part with this position, sublet, lease, sublease, or sell mm. without one agreeing with the kingdom on how the matter should be handled. Mm. That is, how should we handle the restrictive covenants? That's then right. two, again, is it even necessary mm. to, to even do that? So that's what we are focusing on. And we think they have made mistakes and we think they have committed illegalities. Actually, I want to take this opportunity to tell everyone that whoever bought that land, Mm. And the, we are talking about billions involved, billions of shillings mm. involved. Of course, when you say <laughs> an acre in that yeah. particular mm. part of the country uh, goes for 2 billion Uganda shillings, and this is 120 20 acres. acres, that is uh, a staggering sum of money. Yeah, whoever bought that land, they actually bought air. Mm. They should not even waste their time in court, they shouldn't wait, waste their time in cavalry, they should report to Uganda Land Board so that we can have a discussion about it. A discussion about it. What warrants a discussion when the facts are clear? Buganda Land Board or the Kingdom leased this land out. Yeah, investigations are going on, mm. both at the side of the Kingdom. Okay. Uh, even court is investigating this. The Commissioner and Registration is investigating this. Um, um, C uh, uh, CID and the other agencies mm. are investigating this. Particularly, even the Minister of Education, of Education mm. I mean the Scouts fall under the Minister of Education, is right. also interested in this. So we need to dig more. Mm. What happened? Who passed out the land? Who took the money? How was it done? There are a lot of unanswered questions mm. which we are digging into. We have, we have, some, we have reached somewhere in the investigation, mm. but again, we need to, 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 to patch up here and there yeah, to there. see what exactly happened. That and it helps. It yeah. helps. Mm -hmm. uh, when we get the root of the matter, then maybe such a mistake will not happen again. That reveals uh, the intricacies of uh, land acquisition in mm -hmm. the country. And this is a topic that we would love your perspective and perhaps enlighten us on how this goes on. Here we have a case of a piece of land that was leased to ah, an association. On a lease basis. We understand mm. under the laws of the country, leasing mm. means this land is still belonging to the proprietor. Yep, it is simply mm. leased out for a specific amount of period time. of time and uh, on that land there are specific uh, specific aspects for example on how you're going to lose the, to lose the land yeah. it therefore means buganda land kingdom is not interested or should not be seen to be interested in any negotiations about mistakes made by other people on acquisition of this land it should stick entirely to the fact that buganda land board is the custodian of this land on behalf of the Kingdom of Buganda. Any other conversation, whether somebody made a mistake or not, or somebody acted in a way that could again see the land board accept that it might not be the land owner, or <laughs> those are questions mm. that mm. by, so why do you have to engage in any negotiation, or why should you allow that something has to be investigated? Oh, um, you see, if you do not do a thorough investigation mm. about a specific occurrence, mm. then probably it will work again or occur. Okay. We are talking about 120 acres of land. Mm. Um, uh, so far, I think those who sold or disposed of may be disposed of something like 40 or 50. 40. Okay. But almost again, half of that. Almost half of that. Mm. Again, when you when you dig deep into how the subdivisions were done, mm. then you realize more sub more subdivisions were done mm. than what was disposed of. So there are other questions which we need to dig into. Could there be one mm -hmm. sales going on, which are not yet complete? Mm -hmm. Could there be transactions going on, which are not yet complete? All that we need to dig. That's why we need to 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 to, to dig deep into it. Then, who are the perpetrators? Who it's is doing clear. this? Actually, Info information that I have on desk here mm. on uh, Morning at Ten TV indicates that uh, two companies, one, MS Serena Heights company, company, and then 
MS Sky and Lakes Limited. Yeah. These were incorporated in 2022 and 2011, respectively. Yeah, true. Do you know the owners of uh, MS Sky and Lakes Limited and MS Serena Heights? Um, to know Heights. the owners, of course, you have to go now to, to extend the, the, the investigation mm. and the search to URSB. You've got a registration okay. services bureau because that's now how they where the aspect of, of handling companies is housed. Mm. So, and again, I, I wish to point out, yeah. we are talking about those two companies. There could be more that meets the eye, because those are just two. These are the ones that are subleasing. Uh, and yes, and when you, when you look at them, mm. one of them is taking 24 acres, another one is taking eight acres. Mm. So, what is happening to the balance? So again, it takes us to the question you asked. Yeah. Uh, this entire process of land acquisition, what's going on? Yeah. What's wrong in the country? Do we need to do reforms about the processes? Yeah. How is it done? What should someone look, look, we look, shall be look out to for? We shall begin to that. the how yeah. and mm. how we got mm. here. Because land grabbing is rampant across the country. It's not only uh, something that has happened to Kazi. We have, uh, r right now, we have a uh, <laughs> bone of contention on <laughs> regarding the Balalo question. But that uh, could be a discussion for another day. I want to stick to this particular one and understand the laws that existed in 1948 mm. versus the current framework that could perhaps offer a buyer or even a seller <laughs> the kind of uh, <laughs> confusion and they could act in a way that is inconsistent mm. with either one law that was used at the time this land was leased out and acquired by the Scouts Association versus the existing laws right now that could actually give them the leeway whether they are simply beneficiaries of the lease or not. Mm. So what are the two aspects? The law, mm. the Kabaka used, uh, this, uh, that is uh, uh, Edward Mutesa, and the laws right now. Is there any conflict? Actually, the, the law that was used to lease out the land is more or less the same. It's more In less Uganda, same. we have had the Registration of Titles Act, mm -hmm. the RTA. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 it prescribes uh, how you can lease out mm. uh, the land, how you can register mm. uh, or transfer registered land, how can you can register leases, the issue of instruments and the rest. Uh, and it has more or less not changed mm. ever since. Actually, if there are any amendments to the RTA, they have been minor ever mm. since. Because this is a law which was imported right from what? From England. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just changed it into our circumstances, but uh -huh. it's more or less the same. That's right. But uh, to the point, um, uh, where we, we are talking about what exactly uh, are the governing principles mm -hmm. of such a transaction. One, this land was given out on a lease basis. Mm -hmm. The Scouts Association has held this land under a lease arrangement. The lease, what makes a lease unique as a tenure mm. is that it's governed by the covenants. Is governed by the contract embedded in the what? In the lease. So if under that lease specifically you are prohibited from changing user mm. and you go ahead and change user, let's say from camping mm -hmm. to hotel or to a commercial element, you or are in building a petrol of, station. Yes. <laughs> you are in fundamental breach of the what? <laughs> of the lease. Of because that. it goes against the purpose under which that land was allocated to you. Mm. Two, the other in the, uh, interesting question is who, if you are to seek, because since it's a, it's a contract, mm. uh, a contract can be amended. You can go and renegotiate. That's right. But with who? Mm. That's the other question. These are people who went and transacted in Uganda Land Commission instead of transacting in Buganda Land Board, which is the institution established by the established kingdom by the to handle such. Yeah. So that's the other element of the breach. But above it all, after all that is done, yeah. what happens to the person who bought? That's the other question. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is somebody who is going to lose money. Or there is somebody who has lost money. No, I, you keep referring <laughs> to an aspect, and I'm mm. going to put you on the spot for this. Mm. Why are you concerned about the person who is going to lose money as Buganda Land Board? I don't find it a proper. Mm. Why should Buganda, Buganda Land Board should be concerned and entirely on the fact that 
the kingdom is the proprietor. True. Leads this land to a scouts association. For a specific purpose. Which has now been diverted to other aspects. Yeah. Who has done that? The how is not your concern. Oh, it is our concern. You should simply state the fact that this is our land full stop. Government should act within that realm. Oh. Let's go for a break. <laughs> when we return, I'll give you a chance to mm. comment mm. on whether there are aspects within the traditional rulers, restitution of assets and property act of 1993, CAP 247, that could have a loophole. I do not know. Mm -hmm. will enlighten us about that. When I return on Kickstarter, that question will be answered by Mr. Den Spogaya. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm glad you're still with us. If you are just joining us, we are in the Kickstarter segment of Morning at NTV. And the insight is into the process of land acquisition in the country. This particular conversation comes on the backdrop of uh, the latest land controversy in the country, the apparent subleasing and reselling of plots of land on the massive 120 acres of land in Kazi that belongs to the Uganda Scouts Association that was leased to the association more than five decades ago by the then Kabako Buganda, Sir Edward Mutesa II. Right there. What we have right now is uh, push and shove on the part of Buganda Land Board that was bypassed by some people within the Scouts Association straight to the Uganda Land Commission and apparent takeover was initiated. With me in studio is the spokesperson of the Buganda Land Board, Dennis Bogaya, who is uh, offering us some bit of perspective on what exactly is on the ground, but most importantly, on the process of land acquisition in the country. Before we went for the break, I'd put the specific question to him. What is embedded within the traditional rulers restitution of assets and property act of 1993 that may have a bit of a loophole that some of what's being described as unscrupulous individuals may have taken advantage of over to you mr dennis Pugaya. yeah actually uh, there were two before we broke off uh -huh. and one was why is it our why yeah why is it your concern our concern yeah uh, that, that, that's those one. particular people who have bought yeah they are our concern one mm. uh, we have moved and we have set rolling the process of cancellation of you petitioned titles. yes we petitioned the commission had registration okay and even all the legal evidence to have the titles cancelled mm. uh, you can only peti petition against an act and against a person so these people must be identified all of them mm. because we could cancel we could have three or two titles cancelled mm. and then we omit to have others that so we need to identify all the whole them. lot of it and have it and have them cancelled mm. and that's the beginning point okay nothing can happen nothing can even go ahead until we have these titles cancelled because why do we need to have these titles cancelled one they could create third party interests mm. i get something wrong and illegally then mm. i said it to you now I'm creating third party interest. You're creating a third party interest. They yeah. could take these titles to banks, financial institutions. And money can exchange and hands. And have them mortgaged. Remember, bank money is not bank money. It's depositors' money. Depositors' money. So you are, you, 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 you uh, just a simple, simple, something mm. which might look simple. This is a and potential dominoes. Yes. Yeah. Can have the entire country entangled into something which is destructive, mm. even to the financial sector. So that's why we move very fast and have the, them cancelled. That's why the people who got leases, sub-leases, or whichever titles they have, mm. they are particular people of our interest. Now, to a traditional rules, restitution of assets and properties yeah. act. Uh, that act was uh, enacted in 1993. Mm. Uh, at first it was a, a statute, but when the laws were, ch were, were, were uh, rearranged and uh, mm -hmm. it, it, became. it became an act of parliament. Mm. Um, it has not undergone any amendment okay. ever since, despite the changing circumstances. Mm. Then, uh, two... It has not responded to the times. Uh, perhaps. And the uh, needs. But that's another debate. Including the market. Yeah, that's another debate. Okay. But there are questions, for example, uh, this particular transaction. Mm. How did the Uganda Land Commission end up authorizing a change of user, authorizing a subdivision, 
setting ground rent uh -huh. for land which was returned to the Kabako of Uganda. I mean, you are not the landlord. That's right. You do not have the title. Uh -huh. But again, you go and set rent for that property. To put it simply. The Uganda Land Commission uh -huh. conducted an illegality. To, yeah, to put it simply, the houses belong to you. Uh -huh. They are not mine. You have the title to those houses. You have perhaps built those rentals. That's right. And then someone else comes and uh, comes and sets the rent, determines who who, who the tenant should be, and determines for what duration. The, uh, the, the, for what duration. Mm. It's akin to that. Mm. So that's what was done by Uganda Land Commission. To the uninitiated so, in the dynamics of so land management. It might not be more about the law. It might be more about the abuse of the law abuse of the law. I'll just come into that question. To those who are not initiated in the dynamics of land acquisition and purchase, one would expect, for example, the mandate of the Uganda Land Commission lies way above that of the Buganda Land Board. No, not, not, no, no, not particular. Explain that relationship. Um, Uganda Land Commission mm. is a constitutional body mm -hmm. established to manage and look after all government land. Government land. Government land. Land that belongs to the Republic of Uganda. Mm. Let's say, well, a simple example is just near here. Parliament. Have parliament. Mm. So you find that title registered in the names of Uganda Land Commission. State House, mm -hmm. police stations, mm. prisons, you find those titles registered under Uganda Land Commission. Its mandate is to manage government land. It doesn't manage land for traditional institution it doesn't manage land for individual institutions it doesn't manage land for private individuals so the moment that happens it means they have crossed they have crossed from their jurisdiction into territory that does not belong to them and that that in itself is illegal and whatever flows from any action they do mm. it's just marks illegality and fraud not particular <laughs> 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 All right, that's uh, very, very interesting mm -hmm. there. And that, of course, uh, uh, brings us to aspects of uh, inheritance and uh, purchase. Being literally Buganda Kingdom land, within the workings of uh, the kingdom itself, I understand there is also contestation. In terms of contestation in terms of let me just find uh, that particular detail on uh, the fact that uh, a set of uh, princes and a prince the administrators of the estate of the late sir edward no sir daudi chua the second a uh, prince Ka kalema chimera and princess nali nyandaula have laid claim to ownership of this land in 2017 they sued the kabak of buganda and the Buganda Land Board, the Commissioner Land Registration, and the Attorney General seeking a declaration that they are the right, rightful owners of this land. Now, this creates another dilemma. As the Buganda Land Board, being the custodian of this land on behalf of the Kingdom of Buganda, there is a set of individuals who are royals mm. who also claim to be the owners of this particular land. So as Buganda Land Board is grappling with companies including MS Serena Heights, Cars Ventures, and MS Sky and Lakes Limited, it has to again deal with an internal matter. I may not want you to be on the spot on aspects that are Buganda Kingdom, but you could give us perspective. Where does this take the whole controversy? Oh, um, I think uh, we need to make it clear to our viewers. Okay. The Buganda Land Board the body established by Uganda Kingdom mm. to look after kingdom properties, uh, particularly land, does not manage land for private individuals. Beat land for the private to the king because Kabaka has his private. Wait estate. a minute. Uh, you need to, 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 okay. to, 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 to make clarify. It we have private land and mm. we have kingdom land. That means there could be private land that belongs to a royal. Good. And the Buganda Land Board does not manage, manage that, that particular, particular land. land. 
it belongs to that particular person and it's governed by all laws that govern private property. It's actually registered in that person's individual name. Individual name. Not even with titles. So you that goes even up to the king himself. Yeah, because the end Buganda of the Kingdom is so organized that there can ca there can't be a mix mm. between the private estate of, of the king and the official estate of the kingdom. Those are distinct uh, sets of properties, and they are managed differently. So uh, the estate of Sadaudi the private estate mm -hmm. of the uh, this is Dikavaka, at one time thought that amongst the assets, official assets of the king, kingdom, mm -hmm. there Inclusive. were some private assets there. And we went deep mm. into what you can call an audit. Okay. And uh, even as it was going on, a case was filed in 2017. And the court clearly decided that this particular piece of land is institutional land. It is not private estate of any other person. So the issue of uh, 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 claims of the estate of South Daudi mm. is a settled matter in court. That has been settled. It has been settled in court, and there, were, there was an appeal after that. They did not appeal. So uh, we don't want it even to feature mm. anymore on this particular piece of land because it was settled by court. OK. Yeah. That's very good uh, clarification there. It has completely disarmed me. but. We keep on to <laughs> the process of acquisition of land. When incidents like these happen in a nation that is grappling across the country with stories of false uh, falsification of uh, transfer of ownership of land, it creates a ticking time bomb. True. Yeah. You have spoken about something that has intrigued me, the fact that third parties get involved and then banks also come in and by the time we know it mortgages are issued on land or titles that are non-existent or illegal illegal yeah and that creates a whole dominoes of uh, a financial crisis yeah. what are the safeguards in place right now away from the controversy surrounding kazi mm. to safeguard some of the controversial pieces of land across the country Actually, it's not about particular pieces of land. Mm. Um, I think uh, even as the media and uh, all of us, mm. we have not done justice to this. Ah, okay. We haven't. Reason, where do Ugandans invest? Ugandans don't invest in bonds. Very few of them do. Yeah, very few. Ugandans don't invest in um, issues of shares and whatever. Mm -hmm. They don't. Companies are listing and no, people are not buying shares. People are not buying shares. Ugandans invest in land. Land. That is why whether there's always a conversation when Whether it's somebody in UAE, Dubai, uh -huh, they want working to buy hard. Land. Whether it's somebody who waking up, they, you see those ladies wake up to go to markets and yep. uh, do some, transact some business there. Mm. Whether it's a border border cyclist, whether it's a man seated in his office, like mm. attend TV here. Mm. All of them land. at the end of it all, when they get their hard and the money, they want to they, buy land. They want to buy land. That's where they invest. It has been declared the depository but of. The, 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 question, the question is have we done enough to teach the individual on how to safeguard their hard and the money while investing in land? Have we done enough? For instance, I wish to tell you that the biggest guard to your money, if you are investing in real estate, mm. that's the land, mm. is you. Me, the individual? You, the individual. To be alive? Or no, I mean, mean, it's you who can prevent fraud against yourself. It's you who can safeguard your earnings, your investment. So you should be knowledgeable on what you should do before you buy a piece of land what you should do during the process of buying and what you should do after buying because fraud can happen at any of those levels and once it happens you are the loser you the purchaser now in light of uh, your appeal for somebody to ensure that they are 
eagle-eyed in the entire <laughs> process. <Yes. laughs> the laws that are prevalent right now to help for the clean acquisition of uh, uh, properties, including land, are the ones as citizens we entirely depend on. Now, if the Uganda Land Commission and the Buganda Land Board and any other entities out there are the ones mired in aspects that are not clear, then you wonder for the fate of the average individual. Uh, that's why I was, uh, I was uh, you, d you shouldn't rely. Mm. One, uh, the biggest portion of land in Uganda mm. is neither controlled by Uganda Land Commission, nor controlled by BLOB, nor controlled by the religious entities. No. It is private. It's private property. And most of these people who buy, they buy private property. The question is, are you well equipped to handle a transaction of either sale or purchase of land? Do you have the requisite knowledge as an individual? Because even when you look at this particular case we have right now, the Kaz case, mm. the individuals who bought from the scouts were not vigilant enough. Their clear indicators which you see, mm. I mean which if you had uh, interrogated them well, you wouldn't part with your money. So whatever befell those who bought can befall any, any other person, person on a particular piece of land. So we need to focus. What should you do before you part your money with your money? That is, if you enter into a, uh, a land transaction. One. Quickly quickly you should make sure the person standing before you selling to you a particular piece of property is the owner of that property and what do you do to establish that you should conduct a physical search in the ministry if land belongs to the Kawaka of Uganda Kingdom conduct a physical search at the Uganda Land Board office turn up in the personally ask for this file examine it you can come alongside you with your lawyer you mm -hmm. can come alongside with anyone knowledgeable that's right and use the officers to ask some questions if you correlate between the property and the person selling it and you have done a positive identification of those two mm. then you can go to the next what to, ne to the next step Dennis Bugaya the spokesperson of the Buganda Land Board many thanks for enlightening us no also clarifying on what is no doubt a very controversial issue the reselling and uh, subleasing of uh, the 120 acres of land at Kaze. This conversation could go on for uh, an entire day but uh, time is our chief constraint and I would like to say it's about time that we sign out. It's been a pleasure having your company on behalf of the entire team. Many thanks for being with us Morning at 10 TV. We shall be here again tomorrow and during the week or the days ahead we hope we can find ourselves a team of experts who will be here to help us understand the nitty gritty of land purchase and acquisition in the country so that you, our viewer, does not fall victim. Again, have yourself a good day.